Sharon Benanti, Morna Noor, Mary Mann, um, Ralph Bloom, Patsy Brescher, Janie Williams, myself, Alex Knopp, Sherelle Harris, the executive director of the library, and a guest, Amanda Cleveland, uh, who I believe works with the architect for the uh, Sono Branch uh, project that we'll be talking about. Um, and uh, uh, Ms. Dash from the Telesco Services. Oh. Or she worked with you. Um, Correct, she's with Silver Petroselli. Okay, fine, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, good, so we have a quorum. I believe that um, uh, Laurel is having a uh, event at the library tonight uh, presenting uh, her latest novel and she'll try to join us when that is uh, finished. She uh, scheduled that meeting before she was appointed to the library board and therefore uh, had an unavoidable conflict tonight. Um, so let's see, the, uh, getting to the agenda for the evening. Uh, first item of business is to uh, approve uh, two sets of minutes. First would be the uh, minutes of the regular meeting of June 9th, 2022, um, which were circulated. Is there a motion to approve the minutes before we entertain uh, revisions? A motion to approve. Okay, so thank you, Sharon. Okay, uh, okay. Ralph seconds. Uh, are there anyone who'd like to make any suggested uh, revisions to the minutes? Uh, I can't see people because I have my agenda up. Is there anyone who has a hand raised? I'm sorry, I can't see. No? I don't see anyone. Okay. All right. Then uh, if there's no revisions suggested, uh, all those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes as presented, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any uh, objection? Are there any abstentions? Again, I can't see if, it, if there are. All right. Uh, moving on then to the uh, special meeting of June 27th. We have the minutes of uh, June 27th. <clears throat> uh, would be a motion to approve those minutes. Again, could somebody say a name because I'm I have it on my. Uh, I'll scoop. move to move. Uh, sure Moina. move. Yeah. Thank Moina. you. Moina Moina second. All righty. Um, any revisions anyone would like to uh, propose? Hi, it's Sharon. I have uh, just one revision. Um, the top of page four, the first sentence, um, it says Ms. Benante asked what the board could do to help get more staff. And I think what I had said is staff hired. So if we can just add that one word hired. I would appreciate that. Okay. That's it for me. There's a friendly amendment. Any other uh, recommended revisions? Okay, if not, then uh, all those in favor of the uh, motion with a friendly amendment, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any objection, any abstention? Then if not, the minutes are approved. Thank you. Um, the, the, uh, I don't have an addition to the agenda, but I just want to indicate that I may bring up later on a topic that we discussed last month, which is, uh, uh, about outdoor concerts for the summer. Um, uh, I don't see any members of the public who have, uh, joined us. I want to make sure any members of the public, if not, then, uh, uh no, no okay. attendees, no hands raised. Thank you, Andrew. If not, then we'll go to uh, item five of uh, my report. So you may see in the minutes from last month's mm -hmm. meeting, uh, we discussed uh, our interest in setting the hours for Sunday opening in September. Alex, may I ask a favor? Since we have guests, would it be okay if they were able, were they, if they can go before we get into the, if they can do their presentation? Um, so they don't have to wait and, and listen to the whole meeting if they have other things to do. 
All right. I have no objection if everybody else can, uh, can stay. Is that everybody? Okay. Then what we'll do is then we'll go to uh, item 6A, uh, update on the Sono repurposing project, and uh, call on Sherelle to uh, introduce our guests. So we have Amanda Cleveland, who was um, one of the original people who sat and listened to us and, and came up with the design. Her partner is on maternity leave, and I believe she had a baby girl, baby girl. Baby girl. And, and so um, if you're out there, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and we have um, Brianna Dash, who, who's filling in, who will be helping out with the project as well. So um, I'll turn the floor over to Amanda and Brianna. Perfect. Um, so basically, we just wanted to first give a quick update as to where we are in terms of producing the construction documents, but also to quickly run through what the proposed interior finishes for the project, uh, because those do have to get incorporated into the documents. Um, and that way, you'll see them for the first time, you'll have an opportunity to tell us whether or not uh, we've nailed it and we can move on, or if there are some adjustments that you'd like to make, uh, then we'll go back and we'll make some adjustments. Um, so we've uh, kicked off construction documents with the project, uh, which basically means we are now putting all of the information into the drawings that allow a contractor to review it and bid it and put a, a cost estimate to it. Um, and basically what we're doing is we're targeting, um, depending on how quickly we can get decisions back and forth, uh, probably about mid-August for completing those documents and handing them um, over to Sherelle for review and being able to then put that project out to bid. Um, if we can get those answers faster, we'll complete documents faster. If, if there's for any reason we need to get information that's not coming to us quickly enough, um, it may push out further, but that's at least what we're targeting for right now. Um, and if I'm able, I'm gonna do a screen share. I mean, I'm sorry, could I ask you, uh, when you're finished talking about the technical administrative stuff before you get to the interiors, can you pause for the moment for a question? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, um, so from a technical aspect, um, I think we're, unless there's specific questions about what's going into the documents or anything about um, the scope of work included in the project, I'm ready to jump right into the interiors. Well, I do have a question. That's why I asked you to pause for a moment. Absolutely. Uh, which is, this involves Sherelle too. So, uh, you know, this is a city construction project and uh, city has a construction facilities manager and uh, has hired outside uh, staff. So what will be the process for having uh, Alan Lowe and his office review these uh, documents before they go out to bid? So we met with Alan um, at your suggestion prior. Alan, um, because it's not involving um, HVAC and different things like that didn't feel that he needed to be involved in it. Neil has been involved from the very beginning, um, having met with us, um, walking the floor with us to um, just to let us know if there was any um, impediments to anything that we wanted to do. Right now, um, the process is with purchasing um, and purchasing and Guardian work very closely together. Good. So they'll be reviewing the uh, the bid documents before they go out? As with any other project that we do, of course. Great. Okay. Correct. And that's really just for our um, comfort level, too, to make sure that, you know, we sit in on all these meetings and we have a lot of conversations, but we are human and sometimes things get overlooked. We want to make sure that we put that set in front of everyone and give them an opportunity to look through and make sure that everything that you anticipated being in the project is actually still in the project. My apologies. Um, so we will do uh, basically what's considered a 95% set where we technically put pencils down, we'll print them out, and then we'll email those PDFs off to Sherelle. She can share those with anyone who would like to take a look at them and uh, give yourselves like a week or so to review and get comments back. We'll respond to those comments either that, yes, it's in scope, no, it's not in scope. We can add that. We can change that um, and essentially use those responses to then complete and go to 100% construction documents. 
Yeah, the reason I ask is <clears throat> we are humans, yes. um, but, but, but we're not architects. And you are. <clears throat> and I've been involved in a lot of city construction projects and to know how much uh, expertise and specialized knowledge is involved in reviewing blueprints and bid documents and so on. I just want to make sure that the people who have that professional skill level um, are uh, involved in reviewing. Absolutely. Thank you. Not, not a whole lot. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, so again, hopefully you can see my screen. Um, what we have here is uh, the concept images and renderings that we had sent previously that my counterpart, uh, Kimberly, had worked on. Um, the large scope is that we're talking about is truly an interior finish and fit out along with furniture uh, improvements. So we are removing and replacing all of the carpeting. We are doing a full paint of the walls and the ceilings. Um, we are, re excuse me, we, we are refinishing the woodwork to remove that dark finish and get it down to a natural clear coat. Uh, we're improving some of the interior moldings, the plaster moldings that are deteriorated. We're gonna refurbish those um, and refresh them as well as replace missing trim. In addition, we're going to be adding uh, millwork countertops at the windows for bring your own device um, or just a private area to sit. And we're including uh, what's this image here. It's a little hard to see. It's a screen divider. Um, and that is basically a resin divider that sits between um, all of the fancy looking sneeze guard. Um, that's a little more decorative than just putting up simple plexiglass. It actually has some reeds in it to give it a little bit of design. Um, so it's not just a, a plastic that's going to discolor over time. We did use uh, the coast as our inspiration because of Norwalk and the coastline and boating. Um, so you'll see that we have a lot of rich, warm colors that we're incorporating as sort of our concept. The carpet that we're looking at, uh, the concept is fairly neutral. Um, I know one of the complaints is that um, the renovation that was done in the past, the colors, while lovely, are very dated. And over time, those can then need to be redone. And we want to do something that's a little more timeless. So we are proposing um, three different carpets that have different textures to them, but they are in that warm gray family. Um, and I'm just going to switch to the next screen so you can see our darkest carpet we have in that main entry vestibule area. And then the one that has sort of the 50% gray, 50% light gray, it just sort of bleeds into then that lighter gray color. And so that's your darkest. This one here, carpet two, is our 50-50. And then it goes into the white. So you can kind of see from this ideation image how it goes from dark and then kind of fades into the light. For our paint colors, our overall wall color is just a warm, neutral, off-white. We're proposing this rich blue to then be installed in those two window well areas. The pure white PT3, that's just any painted gypsum uh, ceilings. And then PT4, the plaster moldings are currently painted. We're calling to repaint those plaster moldings and that's what we're recommending for around the base and around the perimeter. The wood finish, this is obviously just a concept image because we're dealing with existing wood. It's gonna be similar to this, but it's not gonna be exact, um, but just that nice, rich um, sort of yellow tone. Uh, in terms of the new circulation desk that's being built in, we had two options. We could either try and match identically the type of wood finish that we're getting when we redo the woodwork, or we can go completely opposite um, and do a different wood tone because there are some individuals out there who will say, that's not yellow enough or that's not brown enough. It's not an exact match. So we went opposite. Um, and so we're proposing this sort of grayish warm brown uh, plastic laminate for the circulation desk. All the counters will be solid surface, which is basically a, a cast plastic or a Corian top that has this nice stone look to it. And then in terms of the finishes for the furnishings, I think this one might've been that uh, brought a little bit of concern and being too light um, but we do have some two-toned lounge seating. So we were looking to put some patterns on the back panels that separate one individual from another and then doing some neutral colors uh, for the seats. Um, is basically the finishes in a nutshell. There's, there's really not a lot involved in the project, but we at least wanted to run it by you and, and see what you thought. Uh, we will be meeting with Sherelle on Friday 
And as part of that, you'll see there's a light fixture here. We haven't locked in on that light fixture yet. That's just conceptual. So we'll be going through a few light fixture options with Sherelle tomorrow um, before that's fully buttoned up. So I'll, I'll kind of pass it back to anyone that has any questions or comments about what we're proposing. Please speak up again. I can't see people's uh, okay. hands. <clears throat> Amanda? Yes. I do have a question for you. Um, you know, it's very hard to view plans by Zoom when you're used to having them on a full-size table in front of you. But what I'm noticing, and I must admit, I didn't pay attention the first time, but it looks like the top half of the fireplace is missing. Uh, for in the rendering, you mean? Yes. Yes. Um, so we put these renderings together very quickly. And so it is not 100% representative of what's actually out there in the field. Um, as part of this, and thank you for bringing it up, um, there is currently a, a very dark black green marble that's the fireplace surround. Yes. Uh, we are going to remove that because it really doesn't fit in with the period of the building or the design that we're going for. So we're going to be proposing a few different stones or tiles uh, to Shirelle as well that will bring it back to where it should have uh, been designed to. My, my concern is, is that we are the only community in the state that has two libraries that were granted to us. Um, and we have a rather unique set, set, up, set up. There are only 11 of these libraries in the state. And um, that mantelpiece is one, there were two of them. Where the computers are now was originally the children's room, and it did have the matching fireplace. And um, I think it's important that we uh, consider that the fact the building should be made basically intact as we can keep it. Um, Correct. Yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate, as I say, it's the first time I'm really spotting. I realize that's, that's a, a, a television set over the mantle. Yes. Okay. Yes, above it. Correct. All right, um, that's what I wanted to check. And it's it's kind of hard to tell from these plans, but this is the location of that existing yeah. fireplace. So we are looking to, again, refurbish the woodwork and then uh, replace the stone surround on the fireplace. I just want us to be faithful to the Andrew Carnegie Grant. Correct. Because so, the Belvin Avenue is actually the first one in the state, and this is one of the last, but we're the only community that actually has two such libraries. That makes us pretty unique. Absolutely. And are still being used as libraries. Some of them aren't being used for libraries at all anymore. But we're unique in that respect. I'm always building up something <laughs> that helps promote the city. It's, it's good advertising. Absolutely. No, we were definitely looking to, to maintain those and, and get them back to where they were originally historically. Okay. I have a question. So does that mean that the green marble that's there uh, was not original or is original? I was told it is not original. Yeah, it wasn't. It was part of the, um, the renovation that took place 2004 to 2006. Okay. Yeah, so we want to do a little bit of legwork and see if we can't find some historic imagery of that fireplace to see what would have been there. And if we can't find this specific library, we're hoping by uh, searching his other work, we might find some imagery that would at least get us in the ballpark of what would have been installed there. Uh, there are several buildings of this model in other Good. communities. So you're right, you could find the example there. So that's our goal. Okay. You, uh, do, you, do you think there, Ralph, there are any pictures in the book that we have about uh, Carnegie libraries that we could show uh, show them? We have to look. We know that the um, the Belvin Avenue was thoroughly photographed when they finished it in 1903. This is a much later building. And uh, I don't know if we have interiors or not, but uh, we'll look in the book and see if we can find some. Okay, great. I was wondering if we could have a, a pallet uh, left at the library so that people could go and see it. Absolutely. It's, um, it's, it's hard to see on a computer. Absolutely. Um, if there's any changes that you would like to make before we do that palette, we can absolutely do that. But if you're happy with what you're seeing, we will basically replicate this and put it on a board that can go on, a, on an easel in the library. 
Patsy, they remember that you were going to be away. Yeah. Um, and so wanted to um, just sort of present this to the board. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I think we have to have, we have to have um, this approved by mid August. Is that correct? Correct. So ideally what we would do, um, ideally all the finishes would be approved. And what we would do is we would put in the manufacturer, the color, the model number, all of that in the specifications, because what that does is it allows the contractor to know exactly what materials we are asking him to purchase. Um, paint is easy. It's the same price, whether it's blue or it's white. So that we can put in no problem. But carpets, if we're looking to change, not so much the color, but if you say stylistically, I, I don't really like what you're showing me, I want something different. Mm -hmm. uh, one manufacturer's carpet style to another may be different just because of how the carpet is constructed, the type of fiber, how many colors are in it. So those we really want to lock in on as quickly as possible. Um, it can be right down to the wire, um, but ideally it would be included in that 100% set. Right. So I have, I have two things. Um, I did find a picture doesn't really give you a clear picture, but there is a picture in the Norwalk Carnegie Library's book okay. um, on page 66 um, that I can share with you. And also, Patsy, I remember you saying that you weren't too fond of some of the um, the design or the, the. I just thought we needed some oomph in the in the room, and I don't know how you do that. These seem to be pretty mellow colors. That was my concern, you know, just to get some feeling of vibrancy uh, in that space. Okay. I think there's a few ways we could do that. So we'll go back and we'll look at some of the materials and see if we can't add some subtle um, pops of color in that might take it to that next level and get it where you're hoping to get it. Amanda, I have a quick question for you. I have kids too. Um, and all I can picture is my child with a marker walking down there in the yellow fabric, beige. And I think you said it was wipeable, but can you just explain a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, so there's a couple of different things we try and do in terms of making sure that this, the seats are as close to indestructible as possible. One is uh, you can then go to a vinyl um, it's not the most pleasant to sit on for long periods of time, uh, but it does help with um, soiling um, and other individuals coming in and being able to wipe it down. The downside to vinyl also is if you ever have anything in your pocket that's sharp and you puncture it, you can't fix it. Um, it, it automatically has to be replaced. Fabric is a little bit more forgiving because it has a weave and sometimes we're lucky that that sharp object finds itself in between the weave and just opens it wider and you're able to just kind of close it up. How we treat fabrics is we do something that is only commercial grade. Um, so it will stand up to constant abuse. Um, we can do it with bleach cleanable. Um, and in terms of getting uh, moisture barriers, we can always add a, a moisture barrier to the fabric to make sure that any liquids that do get on it don't penetrate into the foam. Um, there are other manufacturers, and I'm not sure this one specifically, but there are manufacturers that also make removable covers so that if for some reason it gets damaged or soiled, you're able to unzip it, launder it, and have, um, you can probably get like a temporary cover. That way you have two. So you have one to go on while one is being laundered. So there's a couple of things that we can go back and forth on, um, but it's really finding that comfort level for you of vinyl versus fabric, but all of them will be bleach cleanable and commercial grade. Darker <laughs> colors are better um, and pattern is better. Anytime we go with solid, that's gonna show a little bit more. We want a little bit of texture, maybe just a little variation of color. And does that, what you're talking about the fabric, does that go for that, that swirly sort of divider that where that man's sitting Correct. down? Same thing. Correct. Okay. Correct. So it would be, um, all of the chairs, as well as the seat backs. Yeah. I don't know. I have kids. It would be a mess. I just, I know my kids and you guys have a lot of kids that go to the Sonal Library, but what do you think, Sherelle? Um, hopefully the kids will be downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> just push them down. Okay. No, it's, a, it's a valid concern. And I think um, it's really difficult to see from a computer image, mm -hmm. what we're dealing with. I think, 
having a few of those physical samples in hand will help you understand. Some of them truly have the barriers built onto the back. Mm. Um, and some of them, it is truly a, call it a liner that goes over the foam. Um, so the fabric itself, you know, you can still clean it, but it will penetrate through. So I think having those in hand might make it, you feel a little bit better. And we can definitely pick some colors that get a little deeper or darker so that you're not gonna see the pen marks or the food and that sort of stuff. Dirty shoes. That might be, that might be good. Uh, my concern is just the longevity of the material. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do, do we allow food in this part of the library? Um, there was a time when we were not allowing food uh, but I think the thought um, years back was that other libraries are allowing food, so we should, but it's up to us, you know, whether we allow food or not. Okay, so we're going to look at some durable fabrics for the longevity, and we're going to look at some alternative material and some of those barriers, um, as well as changing out some colors to help. And we'll so get you Amanda, tomorrow, tomorrow was not the day you were planning to bring over the materials, correct? No, no I think, uh, well, if we, if we nailed it, yes. Um, but it looks like we have a few things that we should tweak. And so I'd like to be able to do that um, and then bring it back to you as physical samples. We can still do another updated digital board just for reference to see how we got from point A to point B. But I think having the physicals would be nice as well. I'm thinking when when um, you decide on a date, if we can that we can invite the board as well. Absolutely. And they can, you know, everyone can take a look. Perfect. So I am. Um, I, I have a quick a question. Are those standalone chairs fabric also, or are they some kind of like material? Or I mean, it could be anything. It's not decided yet. Um, so it could be a fabric. It could be um, a vinyl. It could be a polyurethane. Um, there are lots of polyurethanes that look like leathers, but they're not. Um, and this, maybe you don't like the chair. I mean, the furniture is also part of the discussion. So if there's something here that you think is too modern or too traditional, or you would rather see more wood, these are all up for discussion. Um, it's not necessary for the August deliverable because we'll be purchasing the furniture separately outside of the contractor, but it is discussions that we should be having along the way. Can we just talk about timeline a little bit? Because you so you sure. were hoping for mid August, you know, plus or minus, to get the the plans approved. And so maybe you said this last time, but when would your, you know, if all goes kind of smoothly along the way, when would you start the renovation? So. That's an actually good question. I'm gonna back it up even a little bit further. Um, we're internally pushing that deadline of trying to get you something for August, just for the um, sense of urgency to want to, to move the project forward. Um, what I don't know is if any of the funding that you have, the grants that you've received, have a timeline where you have to have a contractor on board by. Sometimes they'll tell you within 120 days or six months, you need to have a signed contract with a contractor. Do you know offhand if any of your uh, grants require that? I know for sure that, or Mary, you know, you may want to speak to that too. SNU does not. Um, they're basically, you know, they're just going to, I shouldn't say just to hand over the money. So they're fine with us having, um, you know, the, the say. Um, with the ARPA grant, I'd have to find out. Um, I don't think so, but I'll, I'll speak with Lamont and I, I can find out. Okay. So, and the reason I'm asking that is because if, um, if there is a timeline, essentially when that grant was awarded, the clock has started to tick. Um, and so that puts the pressure on us to complete our documents and then get it out to bid. So talking broad picture here, um, a project of this size, let's say we finish mid-August, will, after your review, will want to go out to bid for at least four weeks um, in order to truly get it out there and get enough exposure. Mm -hmm. um, in that four-week period, uh, we would have what's called um, a pre-bid walkthrough. And that's where we would invite all of the potential contractors to come to the project, walk through. Um, we don't answer any questions about the project. While we're there, we require them to submit them in writing. But 
we do ask them to come through and, and take a look so that they know what they're getting into. Um, when that four week period is up, the bids come in. Uh, we take about two weeks uh, to then review those bids and vet them, which basically means um, assuming everybody's pretty close to each other, we look at the low bidders and we look to qualify them. We make sure that they've got all of the required uh, bonds included, um, that they have all of the references that are required, as well as going through their bids and confirming that they have the entire scope covered. Um, if there are alternates involved in the project, we'll want to make sure that they have those priced appropriately. And that will also then tell us whether or not, if there are alternates, depending on where the, the bids come back, if we can include those. Um, so after that two-week period, we would then make a recommendation to the library board. Um, and then I think it would be a recommendation to, I'm assuming the town, of making an award to a particular contractor for their bid amount. Uh, once that award is made, then we're talking about a little bit of time for mobilization, which is then the contractor will tell us in their bid how many days after notice to proceed, they can then begin the project. And that's very contractor specific. That's gonna be based on their current workload and when they can truly get a crew available to begin. Uh, we can give them an idea of when we'd like it to start and then they can tell us how close to that they can get in there. Um, and then there's just gonna be a short amount of time where they start going through submittal process. So that means they're gonna start sending the architect documentation on all of the products that we've identified going into the project. And we're going to confirm that we agree it complies with the documents and yes, um, it meets our specifications. Um, and then, then, then basically it's mobilizing, it's getting in touch with you to find out you know, when are we, are we closing the library during the renovation? Are we going to try and do it in phases so that a portion of it can remain open while the other part's being renovated? Um, all of that needs to be identified um, ideally now. Um, so if there's phasing involved, we would put that in our documents, but it would get reviewed through the bid process and, and when the, the contractor is awarded. So it's a little bit of hurry up and wait, um, but that's the general idea of scope. Um, the August, mid-August deadline, um, if that's too fast, we can slow down um, and we can move at whatever pace you need us to move at. If it's too slow, um, because there's a deadline for the grants, we're going to do our best to add more team members to get it pushed out faster. So it's, it seems like we need to find out about those grants right away, right, to see. So it's just the one grant, and that's the ARPA grant. That's the one that's paying for the furniture. Um, the other one, that, that we're fine. They're fine. Okay. There's no deadline. There's nothing. Um, okay. And so if it makes sense, um, if you have regularly scheduled board meetings, if it makes sense for us to have a, a deliverable that times right around when those board meetings are, we can, we can do that and we can set a time to say, okay, we're gonna pencils down, send the set over, have you guys take a look at it um, and kind of move on from that pace. Um, we certainly don't wanna push you faster than you're ready to review, but we also understand this has been a, a dream for a long time and people are eager to see progress so we don't wanna delay the process either. Um, maybe this is a question more for Sherelle and Alex, but um... When would we kind of really let the public in on um, knowing like this is happening, these are the drawings, like how do we build, um, you know, just really let the public know that this is in the works. I'm sorry, Moni, can you repeat the last part? I just said, when would we let the public kind of know that this renovation is happening and what it's going to look like? For me, it would be as soon as we decide like on pattern and, and you know, once we give the stamp of approval, it would be great, you know, to have um, the city, um, since they approved it, you know, have a press release or have of something. So once... Um, so like once the approval is designed, once the design is approved. Correct. Um, and so that was a good point about moving every, doing everything around the board meeting. Patsy, um, will you be in Norwalk in September? Yes. So I'm wondering if we could possibly, instead of having the mid-August deadline, would it be possible to have the mid have a big September? Absolutely. 
and the dates are flexible. So we'll bend and move to, to what your needs are. So we can move as, as quickly or as slowly as you need us to. Um, we're just gonna keep plugging along and we'll pause where we need to pause. Yeah, I think it will be great because in that way, all the board members will be able to see in person, physically see um, fabric and, and that sort sure. of thing if we, if we pushed it to um, mid-September, if the board is in agreement with that. Maybe once we do that, that pallet could be uh, uh, posted in the in the branch and um, for the patrons to see. Oh, good idea. Yeah, absolutely. And we can even take um, the renderings. We can adjust them to match the pallet changes. So we can include the updated renderings. We can include um, a quick floor plan, you know, whatever it is you think would help communicate the process. Um, we can provide those for display in the library. Well, I have one other question. Was there ever any consideration to have the, the bench uh, done in wood rather than a fabric? Uh, you're talking about the seating here? Yes. Um, it never really came up, but that's why we're having these conversations. So if wood or any other material is preferred, we will go through our resources and we'll find something that's suitable and we'll bring those options to you. I just thought that would be uh, maintenance wise, uh, easier to clean and uh, it might be more expensive. I don't know, but um, I just wondered if you had considered that. No, uh, we're still in the working progress. So um, all of these suggestions we can tweak. Like I said, if there's anything you see that you don't like, nothing is final right now. So we'll continue to massage until we get it exactly where you want it. This is your library, not ours. So we want to make sure that whatever decisions go in, you're going to have to live with them and we want to make sure you're happy with them. Well, if it is a wood bench, we'll have to make sure that Sharon's kids don't bring their knives in. <laughs> They'll um, use their marker. Um, if I could ask a, a Janie and Mary and Shirella question, I realize that the second district has been and SNU have been very supportive and cooperative. Are going to be uh, contributing financially to the project, uh, but this is a building that is owned by them, uh, SNU, and is leased to us. So my question is: Has there been any kind of formal? action by the uh, by SNU to approve a particular design or color scheme because these are changes we're making to the physical interior of their building. I just don't know what the status has been. So according um, to, oh, go ahead, Mary. No, go ahead. <laughs> That's okay, you can go ahead. Um, no, there, there has not been any formal in regards to um, design. Um, all we did at our commission meeting was approve the funding. Um, but David Westmoreland, who was also um, SNU's chair, was a part of our design committee. Well, a part of the planning committee. So he's very, you know, familiar and aware of, of what every, you know, what our thought process was at that time. Okay, so my suggestion is that... So he's uh, that, that information, but he basically said he was fine with us making the decisions. I understand that, and I'm glad to hear that. But David will not be there in 20 years, and there may be some change of attitude. I don't know. Things happen. So I think it'd be helpful at some point to have the district formally approve uh, the final changes, because it is their building, and uh, they have the right to do so, I, I appreciate there's been a lot of good informal discussion, but uh, I think since there is a written lease and so on, that uh, there ought to be some, you know, formal motion uh, by SNU to approve a particular uh, construction plan. Okay, Alex, I don't see a problem with us being able to facilitate that at all. Yeah. You know, and I, I will have the discussion. Okay, thank you. Alan actually did, their general manager, wonderful, wonderful guy. He came through, sort of tried to be anonymous, um, you know, but being the customer service related people we are, we, we, you know, do you need any help? And he had identified himself. Um, he just wanted to take a look, very happy to support. 
So uh, I just want to publicly thank SNU. They have been extremely, extremely great partners. Um, David has a wonderful eye in, in all projects that he does. So um, very happy to have had him part of the team, but they've been wonderful partners. Good. Okay, any, um, any you, further Rob. questions or inquiries? I have more questions um, okay. while, yeah. while we have her. Um, talk to me, Sherelle, or either of you about blinds. Is this something that you, if you had a bigger budget, you would put blinds in or like, how, what is your thought process on that? And is it something we should have in the design? Maybe we don't have now, but we put in later while we have the designers. So it depended on what wood we were going to use. Like right now we have the very dark wood and we have um, dark blinds. So it just makes things look dirty and just dingy and old. Um, the lighter wood, we might be able to use the existing blinds that we have. Um, so yeah, there's, I think been, there's been some discrepancy. Some people love the dark, some people love the light. At this point, I don't care as long as it gets done. Um, but with the lighter wood, we could, we could use the existing blinds. And we were also considering, um, while it's not part of the project really built into the budget we put together, uh, we, we like to do sometimes what we call add alternates. Yeah. And what that is, is it identifies a scope of work that's not part of the base construction, but it's something the library would like to do. And it allows the contractor to price it, uh, but it's not part of the contract unless when that price comes in, the budget can afford it in which case the library can then say, yes, I'd like to then add this add alternate to the base construction. Um, so we can go through the process of selecting something else and putting that in as an alternate, see what the price is. And if it comes in too high and we can't do it now, we just don't accept that alternate. But if the project comes in low and we have the money for it, we can then enact that alternate and make it part of this construction project. I think it's a great idea to have, a, have you recommend a plan. Uh, but with that alternates, always the question is, is that going to be part of the package for the contractor and you know can you separate it and then do it later yes. without the con you know the contract would have to be written to uh be flexible on that right that's so, the idea. yeah so generally speaking because it's an ad alternate um the contractor is truly just responsible for the base bid um, and when we make that award recommendation if we can't afford that ad alternate we would simply say you're being awarded your base contract amount of X number of dollars. We will not be awarding ad alternates at this time. Now, let's say for some unknown reason, you get a benefactor that leaves you just enough money to do that work. We can always word it to say that that ad alternate could be added to the scope of work within X number of days of project completion because you want to do it so that they don't extend their contract and have to extend their general conditions and costs. That's, that's um, yeah, and or that we have the option not to have the contractor do it, that we do it through a separate vendor. Correct. At least this way you'll have a price for it. So you'll know yeah. a ballpark yeah. of what it would cost yeah. you. Okay. I, I just not having it locked into the base bid is uh, I think important. Correct. And we always recommend add alternate versus deduct because with a deduct alternate, you're going to get pennies to the dollar for money back, where right. this way they have to give you a true value of you're going to add it. Here's what it's going to cost. Okay. Well, it's exciting that we're getting close here. It's going to be yes. wonderful. Um, I have one more final question. I'm sorry to, to take up all this time. Um, you had taught, I really love it. I think it looks airy. It looks great. Um, you had spoken a little bit about the art gallery, the wall space. Mm -hmm. And I think we had talked a little bit about perhaps if you were doing lighting to see if there was a way to uplight those, but I didn't know where we landed with all of that. Correct. Um, so we actually, I'm not sure if we'll have it for tomorrow, but we are talking with our electrical engineer that in addition to the lighting that's going the one-to-one -one replacement on the ceiling, uh, whether or not we add track lighting or if we're going to add picture rail lighting. So he's going to pull some options for those and see um, from a look perspective, from size, from cost, what would be the best solution for the library. And we're going to put those options in front of you. Great. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Sharon. Any, uh, any additional questions? I just have one, um, just a comp, uh, okay. suggestion is when we do, um, kind of publicize this um, 
this design to our patrons, we should also put something over at Belden to really let the Belden people know also that this is happening so that there's just much more kind of cross pollination between um, the two libraries. That's just a suggestion. Good one. Good idea. Any further questions? I was going to say on a personal note, you know, uh, it was 20 years ago that I started working on the renovation of the South Norwalk Library. It was large parts were unusable then. Their roof was leaking. There was pigeon droppings all on the top floor and it had been ignored. And uh, I'm just uh, very pleased to see this next stage because after 20 years, a lot of the improvements we made are now obsolete or the molding is cracking or something. And uh, But I think that uh, we've really saved this gem of a Carnegie Library, as Ralph has said, and I'm so glad that we're using the delay in the renovation and construction of the main branch to uh, make this significant upgrade at Sono. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any further questions? If not, then uh, Amanda and your colleague, we thank you very much for coming tonight. And um, I guess we'll look to see what the next, our next regular meeting probably is in the September. Okay. So I think based on the discussion tonight, that's when hopefully physically we can uh, have an in-person meeting and, and review these. That sounds great. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Amanda. Have a good night. Look forward thank to you. seeing you tomorrow. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
it's not just Sunday, but it's also getting back to our normal nine o'clock openings on a regular basis. Um, we do need to consider getting back to so-called normal. Okay. Well, are, we, are weeknights being considered also because all of it's in the plan? Okay. Because we it just says Sunday hours on I think on the yeah, agenda. Yeah, all and, of um, that's in the plan. Maybe to open the I shouldn't say maybe, but to open the main library another night and even Sono another like night. Okay. So probably not doing things as we've done them before, but um, in supervisors' meeting we did speak about that maybe having another night at both places. So that way, when one place is closed, they have the option to go to the other place. Okay. So okay. Please, please keep in mind, it's going to be difficult for a lot of people being open. Another well, night, we're not trying to piss it, off a lot of people. Very, they're used to the library being open at 30 at night, not 7. And for people who work, that's very hard to get to the library after work. So if we get back to normal hours, I would impress upon the mom, we, you know, we do need the extra personnel. We're running on a short staff now. Thank you. Okay, next item, uh, recommendations for upgrade of furnishings and decorations in the first floor area uh, adjacent to the blue teapot. So, um, uh, sure. Well, should we solicit recommendations on ideas for that area? Um, we can, if, if, if you know, if, if there are some ideas out there, or we can just have a continuation of the furniture that was purchased um, with the ARPA grant I received from the state. Is that the stuff that's there now? Mm -hmm. No, not this. I, I think there are some things there that we got from the state, but I think it's not um, as consistent with the other side of the library. Because it's so that she's like cheap plastic furniture that's there now. It doesn't seem very inviting for stuff. As you know, is there seating in the blue teapot or is it just to enhance? Adjacent. The it's the adjacent area okay. where they had the lecture on. Um, Shorefront Park, for example. Uh, yeah, so if you know, we want to get ideas. I know Cindy and Vicky were working on ideas for outdoor furniture, so I can, um, you know, pose that. Maybe to Cindy, since that's her area. Yeah. Um, when we had the Shorefront Park um, lecture, which was ran twice the same day, we did, of course, have a lot of seniors and. The chairs that are there now, they give at the base of the back. They're not a solid back, but we really do need at least, I'd say at least eight armchairs where a senior can get up with support and the chair will stand still and it will be substantial. Um, if we go that way, I don't, I don't mind looking into grants to even get it paid for and given as a gift. But I do think you know, we've got to look into furniture we're a senior, especially, and that is really the bulk of our of our clientele at the moment. Uh, they are coming back in numbers, but I would say they would prefer to have some substantial furniture uh, that's comfortable and it's easy to get up out of. Okay, well, we'll make some recommendations to. Uh... Uh, through Cindy and others. Um. So my preference would be if you're going to make the right if, if, if Cindy's going to make the recommendations, let her make them. If you guys are going to make them, I prefer that I be involved or that they come through me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I think they should go through you, period. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we had this on the agenda last last month. And I'm just asking, has there been any sort of process to receive recommendations. I don't, I'm not discussing who they go through. I just want to know, is there any process set up for soliciting recommendations? And Sherelle suggested that 
Cindy and somebody else was involved in outdoor furniture and maybe oh, they yeah. could do this I mean, too. Cindy, I mean, I don't care who does it. I just want some action when the board brings up an item and, and wants some action on something. Can we move to the next item? Yeah. So, um, as you know, a very generous donor has offered to donate uh, up to uh, $30,000 for a uh, very attractive aquarium project to be located in the uh, children's department at uh, Belden. And uh, so he and Sherelle and I have been discussing it and we've been discussing it with the city, the law department, the mayor's office. And um, turns out, not surprisingly, I guess, that there's no clear city process or city ordinance for how to accept a donation. And I guess because many people don't make them to the city. And the challenge is that the this aquarium project is based on a very detailed set of specifications for the type of equipment, the uh, capacity of the equipment, even the kind of fish that would be purchased um, with uh, a, a, a procurement budget, and then a budget set aside for up to five years of annual maintenance uh, with a specified cost of maintenance. So, um, it appears that the donation would come to the foundation. And now the question is, how does the foundation uh, uh, deal with uh, uh, getting the uh, aquarium and in, in purchased in place? And should that go through the city procurement process? Uh, the problem there is how to avoid competitive bidding um, or some other way. So uh, the donor and the law department and Sherelle and I are going to be meeting tomorrow to uh, discuss various options um, for how this gets done. And uh, in the end, whatever happens have to be approved by the foundation and by the board and by the city. Um, so we're just trying to figure out this kind of process for, I guess, what amounts to unusual uh, kind of gift. Um, so I just want to bring people up to date on, on that. Um, at the last meeting, we discussed, uh, in terms of the efficiency study, Sherelle's uh, report, and we said that we would discuss other aspects uh, tonight, I, I wasn't aware that we'd be spending quite so much time on the Sono project. I don't know about people's time. Uh, and the idea was to have a kind of an open discussion without taking any formal action and reserve that until the next meeting uh, in terms of making any recommendations to uh, the city. Um, I sent around the memo that I had prepared um, back in April just to list under item B, the eight issues that involved a uh, relationship between the board and the city. Um, and I don't know whether, you know, people might want to take the month of August to uh, come up with some written recommendations on how to respond to them or exchange some drafts and, and so on. Uh, we discussed a lot of the items in the internal operations, which would be item C, one through eight last month. And they're the things that are mostly in Sherelle's report. Um, it doesn't seem like the city is moving very quickly on the other stuff. So I don't think uh, getting recommendations after the September meeting would, you know, jeopardize our being considered. But um, uh, so. Alex. Yes. 
I apologize. I never even saw the, the emails in regards to that um, until I cut on my computer to come on. Um, is it possible? Which means that I didn't get an opportunity to read any of it. Okay. Okay. Is it, is it, it, would it be possible um, if we could kind of, you know, put this off until the next meeting so at least I have an opportunity to read through the material? Sure. I don't, maybe just me, but I, I didn't get an opportunity. And yeah. I can't abstain on. Um, oh, yeah, I, I understand. No, the, so, so what's, what should be looked at, Mary, is the efficiency study itself, obviously, Sherelle's report. And then I've listed, again, I think eight ish. I just went through the report line by line and tried okay. to separate the issues into internal library operations, which Sherelle has recommended on, and the relationships between the city and the library, which the board kind of uh, should take the lead on. So, uh, and I had sent that out in April. So I resent it tonight just. So it would help the discussion. Oh, the same that, that's all right. So my feeling is if people want to go back and look at the report that the this firm did, again, I'm very concerned that the firm never interviewed anybody from the board before writing up a report that involves a lot of board matters. I think it was a, a shortcoming in their process. Um, but if you, I mean, I, I think the, those eight items that I mentioned under item B in my memo, we should, you know, consider and discuss. So, if you want to do that in September, that's uh, fine with me. As I said, I don't detect any action by the city that, you know, would make that obsolete. And after all, all we're doing generally is making recommendations to the city, but we're not taking any action on our own that's final. I think it's wise if we um, address it uh, in the fall, you know, in September and October. Um, okay. Maybe ha maybe have a workshop meeting or something, you know, to put it on the agenda with everything else that we have to discuss doesn't seem to give it the the um, weight and um, review that it requires. Okay. All right. So I make that motion. Okay. So I, if I may suggest, can you make a motion uh, to table this until September? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> is, is there any objection to that? If not, then uh, the motion is approved. All right. Next is uh, customarily, uh, we have canceled the August board meeting. Um, and so I put it on the agenda for your vote tonight. I had thought earlier tonight when uh, the architect was going through it that we, she was suggesting we might need to do a, a meeting in August to approve things, but She's agreed to do that in September. So I don't know of any urgent business that would need an August meeting. We could always have, uh, you know, a special meeting if we needed one. And I'll mention something else during the foundation discussion about something possibly happening in August. But uh, other than that, uh, I suggest that we continue our customary practice of canceling the August board meeting and would make a motion to that effect. I second it. Thank you, Patsy. I'd like to just, um, can I just make a comment? Um, I, you know, in the, in the interest of keeping the building project moving along, um, is Sherelle, is there a way that the building committee could like, you could consult the building committee of, of the board and whoever else was there so that we're not like kind of in September, um, you know, we're ready to really move forward with it i think uh so they agree that we that we could mid-september they will show all of everyone um the designs and the plans so i think it's just a matter of pushing it back one month um i guess i'm not sure what you mean by having the building committee well wasn't there a committee that was formed to um to go through the initial planning phase and it just yes. seems like that would might be a good good group um instead of having like everybody talk about the detail i'm just putting that out there as an option because i mean that's a great option but i know patsy was the one who brought up the fact that she didn't like the, some of the designs or she thought it needed to be more vibrant but this would give the board a chance to do a walkthrough um 
so that they can every everybody who wants to can see the designs and, and make comments. Okay, fair enough. I was just trying to, I, I just think that sometimes, you know, in the whole board, maybe. Well, everybody may not come, but I know she expressly, ex, you know, she explicitly expressed her opinion. So we just wanted to give the person who expressed their opinion a chance to see it. Others, I, um, I can expand on the reason for that, that uh, that feature of the curved uh, seating area is very, very attractive, but it is strong. It, it's weighty. Uh, it takes up a lot of the space. So therefore, the fabric and color are very important. Uh, it's not just a chair or two chairs that if it doesn't work, you can get rid of it. You know, it's central to the design um, and it's attractive in the curve, but I'm I'm concerned about the, the, the color and the fabric, which is why I asked about wood, uh, because you could have cushions of you know different colors and they would be easier and cheaper to replace than uh, redoing a whole vinyl piece. When you do one, you gotta do them all. You know, you can't do just one to have it match if it's destroyed, damaged. Yeah. So, okay. It seems like we should just do it with the whole board. I, it was just a way to be a little, I was yeah. just thinking of a way to be a little bit more efficient and just move things along. Um, so, so we'll regroup in September about it. That's fine. And since I'm colorblind, I'm very careful about not expressing opinions. <laughs> uh, any, more, any further discussion of uh, canceling the August board meeting? If not, all in favor, please say aye or raise your aye. hand. Any aye. objection? Any abstention? Again, I can't see faces, so I assume that it passes unanimously. Okay, yes, uh, Sherelle? So the update on the full-time positions, um, as, as I indicated earlier, you know, we will be meeting with the new um, personnel director, but um, branch managers were interviewed um, we gave them our selection in order um, that we thought. To date, I have not heard anything bad, so that's one of the things we're going to meet on. It's already taken six months for those people to even be contacted, and so, you know, we just want to make sure we're not waiting another month or two months for them because I'm sure people have moved on by then. Um, there is a full-time um, full-time library assistant position open at the branch. Ideally for me, it would have been great um, to have the branch manager sit in on that position, but I'm afraid we're, you know, time is passing. So we may just have to select, um, you know, someone and just move forward um, with that position. Um, so that's basically it for the open full-time positions. Um, can I ask a question, Sherelle? Yes, how long um, how long ago did you give the, your selection to the the um, personnel? Maybe two weeks. Oh, and you haven't heard anything. Okay. No, I followed up a couple of days ago. Um, so at present, I I don't know. Okay. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Um, so I, I saw, I did see Ralph um, the other day because he did find someone to take the, the chairs that we want to give away so we have more um, room in the library. I have been waiting for the city, I, I, I think I've been waiting maybe a month now to find out what the procedure is. Um, the person may have been on vacation, so, um, but to date, I've not been given anything as far as what that procedure is for disposing of city property. So I'll keep following up. Um, I don't want you to think I've forgotten. I've been trying, but I just haven't gotten a response. With the Corporation Council's office? I didn't go through them. I went through the um, department that normally purchasing. It. Purchasing? Yes, through Kathy. Yes. Purchasing, okay. 
but as I said, she may have been on vacation. Yeah. So, um, you know, I know she's back now. Okay. I think she may have gotten back yesterday, so I'll follow up again. And I think Ralph said he had been trying to um, to no avail, so. Yeah, we, uh, the time was spent going through city clerk, other agencies of the city. In most cases, at least two telephone calls each, no answers. Just no one bothered to answer. Wow. And that's not unusual. It happens a lot. So, uh, so maybe she's energized now that she's back from vacation. So, so we'll find out. She's normally very um, responsive. Um, is, so this, is her name Sharon? What's her name? Fancy. Yes. I don't know who's had a purchasing. Her name is Sharon Benante. <laughs> yes. Purchasing for the city. Yeah, yes. Sharon Connor. She's she's a very nice lady. Um, Sharon, sure. right? Yeah, okay. She's got a lot going on, and I think she was on vacation for a while. Okay. Oh. Um, outdoor furniture. I would love to have um, Vicki and Cindy present at the September meeting, but um, let's, so I know um, Cindy wants to look for metal pergolas. She was thinking, she had the idea that um, if we had something like that, we could put tables and chairs and you know enough to seat 10, and that will be a good addition like for small meetings or book groups that want to have um, you know, their, their programs outdoors. And just to give you an idea, if I can find it, hold on one second. Hold on one second, I just want to figure out where this thing is. Can you see the screen? Mm -hmm. Yes, no? Yeah, I can see uh, see what you put up. So this is sort of what, um, part of what they were thinking. Um, maybe not the retractable, but just to give you an idea of seating that they were thinking of, like even for meetings or you know small gatherings um, outdoors. But I'd love to have them, because you know they're working on the project, to have them present in September, if that's OK. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything on my screen, so I don't know. Uh, I, no. uh, did, they, did they say, um, uh, Sherelle, where it would be located? Um, they have not as yet, but I mean, that you know, we can all decide that. I know the grassy area, we were looking at like some kind of a tent or some kind of flooring to have programs on, but it's so uneven in the grassy area. Um, I'm not sure, so I don't know. Would this go near Divya's? Uh... That that does seem like the logical place for it. So um, you know, let's let them present, and 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 you know, they can share all of their excitement and um, ideas, and then we can ask questions of them. Okay. To, and 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 um, you know, even present our own ideas. Maybe one thing you could ask them to look at in the meantime, so we could figure out in September what it would be is, and again, looking at the picture here, I, I hope I'm interpreting it correctly. Instead of having one long table, maybe have two smaller tables that could be fit together if they needed it to be longer. So you could have two smaller gatherings or, or two smaller groups could meet for a, a book discussion outside or, or something and, and not one group take up the whole table necessarily okay that looks very attractive i must say yeah i thought it was a great idea i hadn't thought about that i thought it was a really great idea can anybody else see it oh i'm sorry oh, so should i see that again yeah, we finally got it yeah okay yes good. Okay. i could oh, see good. it my only question was the wooden chairs how sturdy are they but okay <laughs> No, but that's just an idea. So okay. um, just a visual so you can see. 
I know she was yes. looking at metal. She's looking oh, okay. at metal. Good. I've, okay, seen, I've uh, seen something like that at other libraries, kind of outside, like mm -hmm. in the front. Uh, sure. Maybe they could also look again so we could hear back in September. Uh, you know, Ralph brings up a good idea that I know impacts me about having uh, arms on the chairs so seniors can push themselves up. Uh, I find those very useful personally, I must say, or I don't have to grab onto the table. So maybe the chairs, if they could also see. And I, I couldn't tell from that picture whether there were arms on those chairs or not, but. Oh, that was just, that was just an example. Right, um, I understand. Yeah. So, so, many, so yeah, maybe so, they could see if there could, chairs with arms that could fit in their okay. scheme and, and have maybe the, an option of two tables that could be fit together if needed or kept separately if not. That's very attractive. I thought it was a great idea. I think it's, you know, I just thought it'd be better for them to present rather than have me steal their thunder. Okay. And, hold on, sorry, let me come out of this. And I think, oh, as far as um, this for security, we were able to make sure that the children's activity room door is locked so if we needed to get in there um, something happens and people need to barricade inside of the activity room at the main library that was the only one that that did not have a lock so we have that updated um, i sent um something to the mayor and lisha and lamond and so the mayor said you know they're working on something like a plan citywide um, so they are working on that and um chief kahalik had one of his um, I think it was one of the lieutenants contact me, but they're going to do a walkthrough of both libraries and hopefully be able to present to the staff, like what we should do when there's an after shooter and, and things like that. That's very good. Do you know whether they, I think you're going to look into whether the panic buttons work? They, yep, everything is good. So uh, okay. all of them work. What I do want to do at the main library is to update um, the, this, the panel that they have so that we can tell exactly where the button is coming from. They, they are working, so they do know something is coming in. They just don't know the location. So Neil and I are working on it. Also, I'm glad you brought that up. The other thing is um, when I had the gentleman come out, um, they're no longer making or, um, or using the system that we have at the main library. So like if something goes wrong, just say something totally shuts down, it'll be a while because we would then have to update it. So I'm actually looking into updating it now. So um, Neil, um, you know, priced it out. So now that we're in the new fiscal year, we should be able to pay for it. So well, we don't have to wait then and we don't have to go through anything. Right, it, so the thing would be just to get it done now so that yeah. we would avoid that, like. Yeah, great. Yeah. Very important. Very, yeah. Uh, thank you. I'm glad the uh, the city and the chief are becoming involved in this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very supportive. So looking forward to, you know, what they come up with. Any, any further questions for Sherelle? I have one question, Sherelle. Yes, um, uh, was the, your secretary, and just refresh my memory, was that going to be full-time? Is that, was that not in the budget? It, what, I would love to have it full time, but um, if not, I, I would settle for part time. <laughs> it was it's in the budget though, right? Full time is not, but part time we can kind of massage part time. Um, yeah, so I it, I can go with with um, part time, but um, we haven't planned for the next budget as yet, so we'll see. Um, if I had the choice, I would love to have the part time. Um, uh, public relations person come on. I would love to have that and I would settle for the for the part time secretary. If I could have both, yay. But if not, that would that that position is very important. Thanks. Okay, any any further questions? All right, thank you. Then we come to uh next item of old business um postponed from last month. So I want to say it's been an honor to serve as president of the board these last several years and 
thank the board and uh, Sherelle, Chris before her and all the staff for their cooperation with the board. I think we've made tremendous improvements in the library, preserved the parking, prevented the condos from being built, bought the bookmobile, expanded the internet, and mostly kept the library as a wonderful functioning institution during the COVID uh, problem, which I think was a great service to the city by the staff and keeping up its wonderful programs. I always remember Vicki having things for kids to do on Thanksgiving, I'm sorry, on the Halloween and other holidays during COVID and gives them a real opportunity to feel connected to the community. So it's, it's been a real honor to serve and well worth all of the time. I'm glad to uh, step down and uh, I believe I should recognize uh, Mary Mann for the purposes of a nomination. Thank you, Alex. Um, yes, I would like to suggest um, and to put forth for nomination the following slate, um, which would be Moina Noor for president, Patsy Breska for vice president, and Janie Williams as treasurer, if that's acceptable. Do we have the position of secretary of the board? Oh. I believe there isn't Ralph the secretary of the board. No. 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 no I'm sorry. No. There, there is in bylaws, but it has never been filled that I know of since I've been on the board. But I think it is something that should get filled. So I think we should discuss that uh, as we move forward. Okay. May I suggest that we act on these three and then at the next meeting, we can fill the position of secretary if there's a decision to do so. Yeah. That looking. makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I had to second the nominations that Mary has made. I think Moyner would make an excellent choice. Uh, Patsy has been a key ally as vice chair, and Janie has done a tremendous amount of work as a finance, as treasurer and as chair of the finance committee. So I'm glad to second those excellent nominations. Any other nominations? Are there any further nominations? <laughs> Any further nominations? Masons requires it twice. If not, then I'm glad to declare that nominations are closed and instruct the non-existent secretary to cast one vote for the slate and congratulate Moyna, Patsy, and Janie. And, and uh, Alex, I really uh, want to commend you and thank you for all of the, the insight and your hard work that you put into your chairmanship and bringing us forward. Uh, so I'm sure everybody else is in agreement, but Absolutely. thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Patsy. I appreciate that very much for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, uh -oh. I also would like to say um, it's, it's, you've been an excellent chairman and it's been a real pleasure. I have personally learned a lot um, from you and the way you conduct your meetings. And I will tell you that I wanted to join this board because I knew you were chairing it and I knew that it would be a board in which we would get some things done and we and we have so thank you uh, very much I'm excited to work with everybody, especially Sherelle and um, and collectively and collaboratively move um, our libraries forward so thanks. Thank you very much, thank you for the comments I appreciate it. Okay. I, would like, uh, I would like to make a statement. Um, I just wanted to say that I was prepared to nominate Patsy, um, but I understand. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> has some, some time constraints and knowing Patsy, when she makes takes a commitment, she wants to be able to give it all her all for full attention. I enjoy working with her. We both share a commitment to keeping the library for judiciary and the business needs as board members and not involving ourselves in the day-to-day -day or interpersonal dealings. I think she will make a fine leader who respects the position of the person we recommend it to lead the library. I like that she is upfront with her intention so you don't have to worry about gray areas and she is truly kind even when she disagrees with you. She has been around a long time to understand disgruntledness and clicks and avoids overstepping. And I, again, I know she's uh, Patsy's time is constraints and I will support Mona as chair and I will look forward to working with her as well as we all go together uh, as board members. 
So that's what I want to say. Thank you, Janie. Uh, and also, a- Alex, thank I thank you um, for your service. Um, it's been exemplary, so I thank you for that. Thank you, Janie. Well. Appreciate and it I, very much. I'd also like to to thank you, Alex, for uh, your leadership. Yeah. Um, when I started almost three years ago, I think I've only seen you guys in person maybe twice, two meetings. But yeah. you know, you really led us through a global pandemic, and you know, and you and you did it calmly and. Um, I just, I really enjoyed your leadership and I learned a lot from you. And so I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Sharon. I appreciate it. And I've enjoyed serving with all of you. And I think we've all done well by the city. So thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move. We adjourn. Nope. Yeah, thank you, Patsy. And Second. Uh, I have one request to make. I couldn't find the links for the foundation meeting. Sherelle, would you please send it to me again? Thank you. Sure. No problem. Thank okay. you. Okay. See you in a few minutes and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.